Hello, my name is Carlos. Welcome to It's Complicated. On today's video, we actually have the Baroncelli Moonface Chronograph by Mido, which in my opinion might be the most amazing watch that Swatch Group is putting out this year. So this is the Mido Baroncelli Moonface Chronograph. This is an amazing watch, which in my opinion is really a statement piece from Mido. Not only does it have this really fun and unique color blocking, but it also sports probably the most complex movement that you see at this particular price range. Before we continue with this review, I do wanna point out that the good folks at Mido were nice enough to let me borrow this watch. I do not get to keep it. As soon as the review is over, I'm going to be sending it back to them. With that said, Swatch Group or Middle have absolutely no say in the making of this review and everything that you will see in this video will be my own honest opinions. Okay, cool. So if you guys have seen my videos before, you guys know that I like to start the review talking about fit and finish. And the first thing that we see when we talk about fit and finish is usually the case. Now, the interesting thing about this case is that while the watch is relatively sporty, this is basically a dress watch. So the case is very elegant and very dressy. That means that all of the edges have been softened. There's absolutely no bevels. And the entire finish of the case is basically a polished finish. One of my favorite parts of the case is actually the bezel, which is this very nice rounded double step bezel that holds this really nice flat sapphire crystal that has tons of anti-reflective to give us a beautiful look at the dial pretty much in any lighting condition. So some other details of the fit and fit finish of the case that I would point out would be the really nice beveling of the push button for changing the day of the calendar, the really nice beveling and fit of the pushers, which they themselves are actually quite nice, and also the brand signature on the crown that kind of finishes up all the details of the case. So moving away from the case, the next place where we're gonna see just tons of detail and beautiful finish is going to be the dial. Now the dial is just a very simple white dial, but it does have some sort of pearl-like finish to it that makes it play really nicely with light. The dial itself is broken into three different sections with the center section having a bit of a grain to it that can really only be appreciated either under a loop or by looking at macro footage. That second ring outside of that center area of the dial has the overlaid markers which are very nicely polished and also has a really nice radial finish that also breaks up light very nicely and finally you got the last section on the very outside of the dial which is basically the track for the dates so you will see all of the numbers for all the different days of the month there the sub dials themselves are not lacking any detail all of the sub dials have this really nice chrome border around the sub dial that's been polished very nicely on top of those chrome rings you will see different border colors to really break up the dial so you will see a little bit of dark blue a little bit of sky blue and also a really nice yellow on the 24 hour marker to separate the night hours from the day hours and we get some really nice radial tracks inside of the sub dials to give the sub dials a little bit of a sunburst effect being that this dial has so many complications another place where we can see a lot of cool detail is the hands so my favorite hand by far has to be the pointer date which has a little crest moon at the end of it to basically point at the date of the month in that very outside track but when you look close at that particular pointer day hand what really kind of blew me away was the attention to detail on the crescent moon itself which has this really beautiful warm yellow lacquer applied to it that really gives that moon an extra dimensionality and sheen and fatness to it that is just honestly really beautiful it really does look like kind of an artisan detail for this particular watch. The other thing that I want to point out is the minute hand and the hour hand, which are sword style hands, actually have dual finish, which is something that you don't really see on these brands, or at least not to this level. One side of the sword hands being completely polished and the other side being beautifully satinated, like not brushed, but satinated. And you can actually see the grained finish on those hands that honestly, it just looks amazing and it's such a beautiful texture 
to sort of take in. All the other hands are pretty cool too, but the one that probably stands out the most is the little curly hand on the running seconds that basically makes up your 24 hour indicator. So moving away from the front of the watch to the back, we actually get to see this really beautiful display case back that really shows off the value caliber driving all of the different complications that you will find in this watch. The particular value movement that they use in this particular watch is actually really nicely decorated with a lot of perlage, blue screwed, signed rotor, and overall it's actually a really nice addition to this particular watch. It really allows you to appreciate both sides of the movement. So usually this is a part of the video where I would start reviewing the bracelet and tell you all about it. But one of the things that's really interesting about this watch is that there's actually no bracelet option. This particular watch ships with like a pseudo NATO strap, which kind of looks like a single pass strap, but actually has spring bars built into it, which is actually quite nice because unlike a single pass NATO, it actually generates less bulk around the lugs and allows the watch to sit much nicer on the wrist. And by the way, like the strap on this watch really needs to be pointed out because it really shows how the designers of this particular watch actually thought about the entire product from beginning to end. Everything of the color blocking of this entire watch as a product is just such a bold statement piece for a company like Miro, which usually does pretty reserved classical dress watches. This particular band with this particular dial and with this particular set of complications, it's just fun in the sun all day long. Like it just feels like the type of watch that I would wear like on a yacht or sailing or doing something around water or just spending a nice day at the beach. And I think that all of the feelings that you get about this watch and the stories of what you would use this watch and where you would use this watch are really a statement of color. Like, like it really shows how color blocking and matching a watch with a correct strap that really balances everything out can be like 80 or 90% of the story or of the feeling that we put behind a watch that we're really attracted to. So overall, I'm a huge fan of this NATO strap and the combination and if this was my watch honestly i probably wouldn't wear it with any other strap but this one like it is just this is just such a phenomenal concept put together from beginning to end usually after talking about the bracelet i would talk about the clasp this particular strap obviously has no clasp it does have like the sort of fast adjustment thing built into it the only thing to point out is what we've all come to expect that the that the actual keeper is very nicely branded and you will see the words middle in it and you will see a combination of brushing and polishing and beveling on the keeper itself. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the really nerdy part of the review and that's the accuracy part. If you guys don't know, all of the watches that I review, I test across six positions and then I give you an idea of how accurate they are across all of those positions as well as the average accuracy for the watch across all positions. So not to my surprise, this particular movement in this watch was insanely, insanely accurate. It was amazing, it was really good. Especially for not being a COSC certified movement. To make a long story short, we're basically seeing across six positions, the slowest position was plus two seconds per day and the fastest position was plus four seconds a day. That means that the overall timekeeping deviation across all six positions was only two seconds and that is just really nice especially for a chronograph which are a little bit harder to make as accurate as three hand watches so that was awesome so the average timekeeping across all six positions was also plus two seconds a day so that means that across six positions you get plus two seconds a day and the max difference across positions is two seconds. So I think that this is really what we think of when we talk about accuracy. Like it is just so incredibly accurate across all positions. Just a great movement. And I said, really, really amazing for a movement that's not advertised as cost certified. So now we're getting into the difficult talk. The difficult talk is always money. So what is the price of the middle Baron Celli Moonface chronograph? The retail price of this watch is $2,800. I know that by hearing that price, you probably clutched your pearls and gasped 
Honestly, I don't blame you. $2,800 is a lot of money, but stay with me because believe it or not, this watch is still a massive, massive deal. So if you were to look for another watch that has this exact same complications, a very similar movement, and it's basically the same style watch, the closest thing that you will find would be the Long Jeans Master Collection Chronograph. And that chronograph is $1,000 more at three thousand eight hundred dollars so you would ask yourself why is the middle a thousand dollars less than the long jeans is it the accuracy obviously not is it the complications obviously not because both of these technically use the same movement is it the looks i don't think so because i think that the middle actually is a much more fun and everyday casual watch than the long jeans i think that the middle looks just phenomenal well there is an answer for this the question is for you as a consumer is this difference going to justify another thousand dollars and that is that era the movement manufacturer for the swatch brand makes a special version of the value calibers for both long jeans and omega that actually sport a column wheel modification this is something that eda does pretty regularly so i'm not exactly sure that a thousand dollars would really justify the price of getting the column wheel modification so some folks might make the argument that column wheel is something that should cost a lot more and that it's more of a horological luxury and that therefore that is how you justify the thousand dollars and for me when i look at swatch brands and i look at chronographs other chronographs from long jeans or chronographs for omega you will notice that both omega and long jeans make some chronographs that are much much more expensive that actually don't have column wheels i think the column wheel debate is a bit overrated especially when we're talking about movements that are all based on the value caliber there's other column wheels like the el primero and other sort of more proprietary calibers that i do think bring more horological value but i don't think that modifying a value to have a column wheel should cost you a thousand dollars more so if you ask me the middle's actually the perfect watch and if you've considered the long jeans master collection chronograph i definitely think that you should look at the middle because i think that like you can save a thousand dollars basically have the same watch maybe even funner and if you think that the colors on this particular watch are a little too loud or a little too bold for you there's other color blockings of the same watch for the same price uh that i think that you might enjoy a lot so you should definitely check them out okay so this is the part of the video where i get into likes and dislikes so likes honestly this watch is so much fun like i love this watch like i really love the finishing on the hands i love the complications i'm a big fan of chronos just the overall execution of this thing is great i love that this is kind of a statement piece for the brand where not only is it like their top level watch with like the more co most complex movement and probably the best set of hands and finishing that you will find across all of mido but that they also swung for the fences and made such a fun colorway of this watch with this really beautiful pseudo nato strap like the overall vibe of of this thing is just so much fun and as i said like this is the type of watch that i just want to take with me and like have some sort of water adventure with as far as dislikes i think that there is only one gripe that i have so throughout this video i've been talking about how this particular colorway just inspires me to want to go and have a water adventure and be on the on a yacht or maybe go sailing go to the beach and have an awesome day at the beach and the downside of this particular watch is the water resistance and this is where things get a little weird because this watch at the end of the day is not a sports watch this is a dress watch it just happens to have a color blocking that is super sporty and super fun it just feels like something that you want to have a water adventure with i don't expect it to be nearly as good as a diver but it would be really phenomenal if the design for this particular baron Chellis could be updated to just at least be 100 meters of water resistance if we could at least take this watch to the pool it would make this watch like <sighs> amazing not having that water resistance is kind of really the only missed opportunity for this watch like it just would have made it perfect so overall the baron and shelly moonface chronograph is a killer watch i'm 
really amazed that Miro is taking such big swings. I feel like everything started with their Ocean Star GMTs and then they upped it up a notch with the TV big dates. Now we have these amazing Baron Chelly chronographs that are just absolutely bananas. So I have to say that I'm really looking forward to seeing what other novelties Miro is going to have through 2024. But anyways, enough about my thoughts. Tell me, what do you guys think? Like, do you guys think that this watch can actually compete with a long jeans master collection do you think spending a thousand dollars extra for a column wheel is actually worth it how do you guys feel about having a watch that looks like this but not having that super water resistance i know that there's people that refuse to swim even with divers simply because they don't want to get their watches wet tell me what you guys think about all of these i read all of the comments and i really appreciate it when you guys take the time also, by the way, if you like this video, please take the time to like and subscribe. I am trying to monetize the channel and I'm only a couple of hundred subscribers away from being able to monetize this thing and it's going to make a huge difference. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys spending the time with me and I really hope to see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching, you guys. See ya.